So welcome back students. So we continue with module 4 and uh, in the previous lecture we have seen the methanol formulation, the processes used for methanol production. We have seen the ICI process and uh, how it is uh, governed by the rate catalyst. Now in today's lecture we will complete the methanol synthesis, we will see some other reactors and then we will move ahead to the formaldehyde production. So what we will see is in the with respect to methanol we will see the Lurgi and the Halder Tapso process. So Lurgi only the issue with Lurgi is they have just designed the reactor as such. While the Halder Tapso is you know is, is a very renowned multinational company and they have also developed a process and will assist the process where they are producing the methanol. So then we move to another concept which is called a slurry reactor. This is a new innovation which is called the slurry reactor for methanol production. And then we complete methanol and move ahead to formaldehyde. So we will see the formaldehyde process. There is only a single process which actually produces formaldehyde from methanol. So the starting material from formaldehyde production is methanol. So we finish methanol first then we move ahead to formaldehyde. So if I uh, just want to revisit what we have explained in the previous lecture, so we have said in the ICI process, uh, this is the exactly the ICI process which I have discussed. So it has a reactor system, it has a light end separation and a pure methanol column. This is a gas liquid separation. So if you see it has a heart of the process for methanol is the reactor. In the reactor what you do is you send a compressed syn gas, then what you do is you try to exchange heat with the effluent coming from the reactor and then what you do out of this send a part as quench so as to control the heat of reaction within the reactor and the remaining around close to 40 percent of the syn gas is sent as a feed to the reactor. And then as before uh, the effluent while, effluent while it comes out from the reactor it gets cooled and then it exchanges and reduces its heat through an air cooled heat exchanger and then get separated in a gas leak separator. So what you do, you get the syngas which is coming out from here, you get the syngas, so the syngas is compressed and some part is perched outside and it is sent to the reactor, this way it goes. So you gas liquid, once you separate the liquid part goes here where the light ends, so uncondensed gas and light gases are removed and the remaining water plus the methanol solution is actually sent to the pure methanol column. This is actually a distillation column and it distills the methanol and the water. So you have methanol in the top product and methanol, higher alcohols or water in the bottom product. So the heart of the process here is the reactor. So if you see I have made a cross mark which is a catalyst bed. So this reactor has been defined in a different manner with Lurgi. The Lurgi is a company which actually deals with the licensing of these reactors. So you see this is the reactor, Lurgi reactor. The difference is, is in the reactor. So the cooled, here a cooled tubular reactor is used. So these are, you see the red ones, these are the tubes, so these are the tubes and uh, what happens is you insert boiler feed water as the inlet. So what it will do is it will take away the heat and generate steam from the outlet. So you send the gas that is the syn gas from here inlet, the same here what we have done and if the gas outlet this is the effluent is the same what is coming from the conventional process. So we have this reactor, this reactor is if you see the boiler feed water which actually what it does is it cools the tube. Okay. So it comes into the inlet between the tubes, the space between the tubes, so it will actually carry away the heat of reaction. So it will cool the tube because in the tube itself, in the tube itself the catalyst particles are placed. Okay. So you have the catalyst particles present here. So with this boiler feed water nearly isothermal reactor and the heat of reaction obviously is instantly converted into high pressure steam. So a high pressure steam is generated through this reactor which is coming out of 40 bar. Okay. So this steam can be used in the distillation steam in the distillation process later. So if you see you need steam here. Okay. So for this, this steam and you also need steam here. So these two steams can be obtained from the steam outlet. So it can be also used, so it can be used in the distillation column as well as in the to supply the heat for the compressor. So if you see there are many compressors, one is there, here is we have one compressor 
here is the other compressor. So, you can use this heat of reaction through this steam outlet to generate power for the compressor. So, this is what the Ludwig process talks about. So, moving ahead, this is the Halder top step process for methanol productions. So, what it is you have a succession of adiabatic reactors. So, you have see there are adiabatic reactors, let us say we have an adiabatic reactor here, these are all adiabatic reactors. So, they are utilized and in here the heat of reaction is removed via intermediate coolers. If you see you have an intermediate cooler here, you have an intermediate cooler something here, then here, then here, all these are intermediate coolers. What it do? It will just take out the heat. So, heat of reaction is removed by the intermediate coolers instead. So, it is a series of reactor instead of one reactor. Okay. So, that is what the design is different from the previous ICI or the Lurgi process. So, otherwise the remaining process, so if I want to consider the remaining process, the only difference with the previous process which we have discussed that is ICI process is in that the stream of the inlet is actually entering the reactor, but here it is radially. So, if it is enters radially across the catalyst bed, it will cause lower pressure drop, okay, that is the important difference. So, purification of crude methanol is similar to that of the ICI process that is conventional methods. So, this is this process if I want to write down this process. So, this one this process is the same as we have discussed for the ICI process. So, not much change only it is has a series of adiabatic reactors and the adiabatic reactors the flow is through the radial direction not axial. These two are the difference and you have intermediate coolers to cool down the feed because you want to maintain the temperature because it is adiabatic process. So, that is why you have to for this temperature profile you use intermediate cooler. So, there is another alternative process for methanol production which you use this the slurry reactor. This is a recent innovation. So, a, this is a three phase process gas liquid. Okay. This is a three phase process this is invented by this chem systems and it is developed by air products relatively recent innovation in methanol synthesis. The method employs a slurry based reactor in which the solid catalyst is suspended in an inert hydrocarbon liquid and the syn gas bubbles through the bed. So, you have the reactor at the heart here you have the reactor you have a slurry which is in the green this is a slurry. So, in this slurry you have what you have is a inert hydrocarbon liquid. So, what you do is that uh, you pass the thin gas like previously you are doing you compressing your so this you are compressing you are providing the heat from the effluents to the thin gas you are reducing the heat of the from the top product because the products come from the top product. So, the thin gas is heated indirectly and it is sent to the reactor what it happens is the reactor actually because of this polar liquid absorbs the heat of reaction. So, this inert liquid is then taken out it is circulated again it is pressurized and sent back to the reactor. So, you have the feed coming here syn gas entering at the bottom and it is bubbled through this slurry reactant products then actually comes out here in the gaseous state then you recover the heat through steam. In the first process this is a gas liquid separator you separate the gaseous and the liquid component here. So, the gaseous component is primarily syn gas which is again compressed syn gas is compressed and sent back to the reactor the some amount is purged. So, as to maintain the level of inert the inert is usually with syn gas is argon. So, uh, then you again send the remaining liquid solution to a liquid liquid separator like before you what you do is that take out you get crude methanol out of it. Okay, you get the crude methanol out of it which and the remaining liquid let us say the water the part of water you send back or any syn gas which is there it is sent back and to the reactor. So, this is how the slurry reactor operates. So, it should know it is important that the slurry reactor is one in which the solid catalyst is suspended in an inert hydrocarbon liquid and the syn gas is bubbles through the liquid. The syn gas is sent and it is bubbled through the liquid. So, this is the syn gas which is coming. So, it should be uh, please note that a catalyst stays in the reactor and the hydrocarbon liquid is recycled via heat exchanger following the separation from the gas phase. 
So, that is what I have said just in the previous slide that the inert hydrocarbon is circulated, it is compressed and sent back. Okay. So, the area should be like this, it is sent back. The primary advantage of this procedure is that the presence of the inert hydrocarbon absorbs the heat generated by the reaction, hence it maintains a constant temperature profile within the reactor. So, your ultimately objective is to make the reactor as azothermal as possible. So, what advantages it has through this slurry reactor? A higher single pass conversion can be accomplished than in conventional ICI or the other process, thereby decreases the expenses associated with syngas compression. So, the compression cost what you have in for syngas is reduced because in one way only you have to do it only once because in once process only you are getting close to a very high conversion. Okay. So, this conversion is very high. So, that is what this of greatest advantage is, it possesses a higher single path conversion. Now, we have seen the conventional methods, we have seen the innovation that is the slurry reactor. Then there are other methods, just in the recent innovative method, there have been done a few academic work and some research work which reports the direct conversion of methane to methanol. Can we have this sort of reaction? Can we execute this type of reaction? So, this reaction enthalpy is one around it is exothermic in nature. So, what advantage does it give us? if I carry direct because right now what we are doing is uh, we are converting this methane by a methane reforming process to syngas and then syngas we are converting to methanol. Now can we do, can we remove this syngas and directly convert methane to methanol? There have been process, so there will be two advantages. So what are the different reactions if for example like that compared to the typical process of steam reforming followed by methanol synthesis, the efficiency, the efficiency would theoretically be vastly improved. So, you will have 1 mole of methane will give 1 mole of methanol. So, significant contribution would be made for the decrease of greenhouse. Now, I will tell you what does it mean, the decrease of greenhouse means it will produce less and less of carbon dioxide. This is a result of the synthesis of carbon dioxide and a major greenhouse gas from methane where feed and fuel are present in the reformer. Now, if you recollect there are some reactions in the reformer, see for example, we discussed in the previous uh, class in the combustion suppose you are doing a autothermal process. So, where both combustion and reforming takes place. So, for example, in the combustion which is exothermic in nature, so you have these reactions CH4 plus half O2, so obviously it would not be methanol but usually in the steam reforming it takes place syngas and then again you have another reaction if you just recollect when methane reacts totally with oxygen to form CO2. So, it means that in the steam reforming of methane you are producing CO2 here. So, that CO2 is now not be forming because you are converting CH4 directly to methanol. Then this is exothermic reaction, the exothermic heat of reaction will be used for the reforming reaction. And what were the reforming reaction we studied? Reforming reactions, see for the reforming reactions what we studied is we had this methane reacting with the steam. So, this will be reversible in nature to form syngas. Then you had another reaction if you recollect, this is the water gas shift reaction. So, carbon monoxide reacts with water reversibly to form CO2 plus H2. So, again you see you are, in a, you are not allowing this CO2 to form. So, you are saving two CO2 formation reaction, one is in the combustion zone, another is the reforming zone. So, that is why I said that from feed and fuel. So, when you do a uh, reforming methane, you are saving out in the production of this CO2 gases from reforming and combustion zones respectively. That is why I have written the term decrease of greenhouse impact. So, if you can go ahead from methane directly to methanol, that will be a great and vast improvement and more so you have higher yield. So, this is what many people are doing, but there are some problems, it is not easy to conduct this reaction. What are the problems? Let us see. 
So, this I just now discussed the carbon dioxide is produced during steam reforming of hydrocarbons by the water gas shift reactions in the reformer. Combustion of the fuel for heating also produces substantial amount of. So, this is both this is due to the steam reforming of steam reforming of methane. So, I wrote the equations in the previous slide. So, this is the consequence of the steam reforming of methane. So, then it is very easy you convert methane to methanol, but a straight conversion so thus would allow eliminate both sources of carbon dioxide. However, the issue is they have carried out such reactions, but there is a very low yield because they could not get the appropriate catalyst. So, the because of this low yield many companies are not willing to take this further for commercialization. Okay. This is the reason why this has not been successful direct conversion of methane to methanol. So, we complete methanol here the once we complete the methanol we have seen all the processes we have seen the ICI process, Lurgi process, Halder Topse process and the direct conversion probability. So, this is about methanol. Now, once methanol is formed it becomes the raw material or the precursor for formaldehyde production. The formaldehyde production is one of the main application of methanol accounting for about 35 percent of methanol consumption. So, around 35 percent of methanol is consumed for the production of formaldehyde. Formaldehyde you know it is a very useful product chemical which is used for preserving many things like food stock other things. So, what happens what are the two reactions there are two reactions involved one is endothermic one is exothermic. The endothermic reaction is the one where methanol gets converted to formaldehyde and hydrogen and the second reaction which is partial oxidation methanol reacts with oxygen to form formaldehyde and water. So, you what you can do you can design a reactor where in the first reaction you get the heat required for the second reaction that is endothermic. So, in the first reaction and second reaction can be clapped together the partial oxidation will provide the end temperature of it will provide the energy to run the first reaction that is the methanol to formaldehyde formation. It is possible for the transformation to take place via dehydration of partial oxidation. So, some plants what they do they do both of them simultaneously and some plant will only focus on the second reaction. Okay. So, there may be both ways possible you execute both the reaction simultaneously or you execute only the second reaction. So, exothermic partial oxidation process supplies the heat for the endothermic dehydration reaction which is commonly performed over a silver base now, the catalyst here belongs to a silver base catalyst in a single reactor which is the industrial practice. So, let us see the flow sheet now. So, this is the flow sheet for formaldehyde production. So, it has few of the unit processes first is the vaporizer then the reactor, the absorber and distillation column. As before for any flow sheet all of these units have specific purpose. The first part we will discuss the first one initially it will vaporize the methanol mixture. So, fresh and recycled methanol is evaporated in a vaporizer into which air is parched to produce an explosive safe feed combination. Now, if you recollect in module 1 I think in lecture 3 we discussed the safety limit. Okay. So, it should not self ignite. So, this methanol plus air methanol is also a source of fuel right you must understand. So, methanol plus air combination mixture such a manner it is become below the total flammability limit TFL. So, it is sent it is vaporized and sent and mixed with air and steam. So, what we do is you carry out both the reaction air as well as steam. So, air is here steam is here. So, it is heated up. So, entire uh, mixture which is methanol plus air is heated up. So, more one of our some of the reactions already been conducted for example, like methanol formation takes place here together with the steam. So, again steam is supplied here the resultant vapor is heated to the reaction temperature. So, reaction temperature it is heated the entire vapor process that is at 890 Kelvin. Okay. So, the vaporizer produces the actual feed for the reactor. Now, after the vaporizer the entire feed when it is mixed with steam and it has air in it is goes to the reactor. This reactor is the heart of the process. It is conducted in a shallow it is a shallow bed of catalyst. 
the shallow beds of catalyst what it happens is the resultant gases are properly cooled. So, this is where the reaction takes place the, the silver catalyst bed is of the height of 10 to 50 mm. So, whatever heat is generated the issue is that even though one of the reaction is endothermic the other is exothermic overall the process is found to be exothermic in nature. Due to that you send in boiler feed water you get steam out of it okay and then you send the remaining product the effluents after removing some amount of heat okay. So, after additional cooling the gases are introduced to the absorber. So, after you cool this the gases are introduced to an absorber. So, in the absorber what you do you remove the off gases the light gases and you have methanol okay you have methanol here means uh, sorry not methanol it is a mixture of methanol and formaldehyde you will get primarily formaldehyde solution okay formaldehyde or methanol because other things off gases such as oxygen and other things are already taken away because in this absorber you send water and you allow the liquid effluent to meet counter currently with water with this it is absorb most water absorb most of the off gases. So, you have methanol water and formaldehyde coming as the bottom product. Then following distillation a 40 to 55 percent wet formaldehyde solution in water is produced. A 40 to 55 wet percent formaldehyde solution in water is produced and the vaporizer is recycled with methanol. So, it means you will get 50 percent wet of formaldehyde and remaining methanol plus water is sent back into the vaporizer ok. So, that completes the entire process you have a vaporizer, you have a reactor and waste heat boiler, absorber and a distillation column. Despite the considerable heat loss caused by the endothermic dehydrogenation reaction the overall reaction is strongly exothermic ok. As it takes place under adiabatic circumstances a temperature regulation is crucial because it is under adiabatic reactor the temperature you have to regulate the temperature. So, how to regulate? So, thus temperature control is accomplished by the recycling of the surplus methanol and the injection of steam to the feed. So, two ways you are regulating temperature within the reactor see here is one you are having injection of steam to the feed. So, you see here you are injecting steam to the feed earlier I did not explain, but now you will understand why it is this is to control the temperature because you send steam you control the temperature. And then also what you do is you recycle the surplus methanol. So, you add excess of methanol here with water. So, nowadays on this particular method that the second the exothermic reaction is considered by the industries. So, that is why it is written here the partial oxidation process is much more preferable nowadays over a metal oxide catalyst. This is becoming a more convenient way as an industrial important reaction for production of formaldehyde. So, instead of taking the methanol you can add methanol and the do a partial oxidation to formaldehyde. So, this actually completes the formaldehyde process and we also discuss the methanol process. So, in contrast only thing is in the formaldehyde process in contrast to the silver catalyzed method the method will use extra air. So, this air what you provide here you need higher amount of air for the partial oxidation process. The distillation column for methanol recovery thus can be eliminated as methanol conversion is greater than 99 percent. So, it means this column you can eliminate this column if you do a partial oxidation because the conversion of methanol is almost 99 percent. So, you would not have anything to recycle in this distillation column or you do not have anything to distill. So, that is why this partial oxidation is primarily of industrial importance and they are used in industries for the production of formaldehyde. So, methanol conversion is greater than 99 percent. So, that actually actually concludes our formaldehyde production lecture. So, please go through this textbook and also go through this uh, Primarily you will get everything in this textbook and uh, including both the process for the ICI and Lurgi the flow diagrams which I have drawn consist of this book only. So, I think uh, you can go for some additional papers where you can find out the direct conversion of methane to methanol. Thank you.